Hey y'all, my name is Kimberly. For those of y'all that don't know me, I usually make travel content, but today I decided I wanted to do a different kind of video. I want to eat like an American in the 1920s. I think this era is super interesting. It's a roaring 20s. I think of Great Gatsby. Um, also, it's the era of Prohibition, so there ain't going to be any alcohol in this video. It's also right after World War I and right before the Great Depression. So, a lot happened during the 20s. Also, my grandmother was born in 1927, and I'm taking care of her. So, we'll get to see her reaction to these foods. She probably will not be able to understand what I'm doing today because she's almost deaf, so she won't be able to hear what I'm trying to tell her. But we'll see. Just a disclaimer, today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, I only have 2,000 subscribers. So in order for me to get a sponsorship in the future, it would mean the world to me if you could click on the subscribe button down below. All right, guys, let's get started with today's video. I'm hungry, I need to go to the grocery store and get breakfast, so let's go. Oh, goodness gracious. Am I in Germany? It's so dark and rainy. Okay, so I went to Kroger's and it was a little awkward because I don't think people from this hillbilly town are used to recording in public. I went to the cereal aisle to get cornflakes because apparently that was a huge thing. I had to resist the urge to get Lucky Charms. And here are the boring cornflakes. Then I went to look for oysters, didn't find anything. Then I had to get Maxwell's coffee and found that yes and then I went to get the beautiful wonderful wonder bread and after that I looked at the alcohol aisle and thought I'm not gonna be hanging out here I'm gonna have to say no to alcohol so that was actually a pretty successful shopping trip. I wasn't able to find oysters, which apparently they ate a lot of oysters and clams in the 1920s. So we'll not be eating oysters. Not gonna lie, not that disappointed about that. But I did get um, everything else I need for the other meals. You know that feeling of when you walk out of the store and you just know you forgot something? That's exactly what I'm feeling right now. So I'm probably gonna have to come back later. I'm dying, I need breakfast and coffee. So I'm gonna get home, show y'all what I got, and yes. So apparently they just ate their cereal with cream, which is really intense, but I'm gonna try it because you gotta do what you're, they're doing, you know? So I found this recipe book and I'll link it down below in the description that was found at a university and it's super interesting because it shows um, exactly like a recipe book of what they would eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I noticed a trend where for breakfast, a lot of the times they did eat cereal. So that's really common even today, but the difference is, is that they were eating cornflakes without sugar. So this was when obesity was not really a big issue in the United States yet. Um, it was right after World War I though, and this is when there was a lot of food rationing. And the way they would ration foods is by having meatless Mondays or um, no wheat Wednesdays. So they would have these themed days that actually kept, kept them kind of healthy but rationed on the food so that way they could send them to the soldiers. Um, so super interesting. In the 1920s, it was also alcohol free, so we're not gonna have any alcohol. So the 1920s is really interesting because it was between two decades of serious restriction and rationing. Um, so it seems like they actually ate quite more. But in the 1920s was also the introduction of processed food. So you started to see frozen vegetables, frozen fruits more. They learned how to preserve food coming out of World War I where they learned how to where they learn how to have more processed foods and preserve foods for soldiers um, so that way the food could last. So Americans were still healthy at this time but it was definitely moving closer and closer to more processed foods. Grandma, uh -huh. what year were you born? Huh? What year were you born? What? What year uh -huh. were you born? I don't know. Was it 1922? I'm not sure. I think so. 
It was either 1922 or 1923. Uh-huh. But good job. Huh? Good job. Uh-huh. People in the 1920s ate cornflakes. <laughs> People in the 1920s? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could hear. It's okay. Sometimes it's good not to hear things. <laughs> okay, so my grandma definitely does not understand anything that I'm saying. So I'm eating the cornflakes right now. It's good, but I honestly prefer it re with reduced fat milk. I don't know why, I just love reduced fat. I love the taste of it over whole milk, but it's still really good. Okay, my grandma's just staring at me like, what is this contraption, what is she using? So I'm gonna eat breakfast with her, and I will see y'all for lunch. So I'm drinking my Maxwell coffee right now. It makes me miss my Maxwell. My boyfriend's name is Maxwell, for those of y'all that don't know, he is German. Um, and he's in Germany and I'm here in America. It's really bland. It's, I think I made it a little strong too, so it does have a really bold taste, but it's filtered coffee. I prefer espresso. Why am I so extra? I don't know. But now, okay, Alexa. She's ruining my video. Some examples of copies of videos are high definition videos. Alexa, shut up. Okay. Now that I'm properly dressed, we can make lunch. What's on the menu for lunch? We are gonna make some tomato barley soup, which kind of reminds me of a European dish almost. Really interesting thing is that I think a lot of these dishes remind me of European dishes. dishes. Um, around this time too, apparently, Mexico was really influencing the American food choice and it started to have more infusions of Mexican flavorings. So this is what I did to make the tomato barley soup. I got a can of stewed tomatoes. It's important that they're stewed. And I opened it with my parents' fancy can opener, which does not cut your fingers like the other can openers do. Um, I don't know how this exactly works. It's basically magic, but here's me trying to show you that and it's not focused, so yes fail and the next thing that I did was I got chicken broth and I just poured the whole thing into there I don't know if that's exactly what I was supposed to do I don't really measure things out which is a big flaw that I have in cooking and then I cut onions up um, and I just chopped them thought I hurt my finger but I did not and yeah so you just chop it up and then I chopped up two celery sticks and a carrot and I just chopped it all up and I threw it into the pot as you can see here. Okay, and then I seasoned my soup with just some pepper and salt um, and garlic as well. Um, I didn't throw the stewed tomatoes until the very end. I probably should have mentioned that. And then I went ahead and poured in the barley. I honestly just measured it with my eyeballs, so I don't know how much I put in there. I hardly measure things out. I just kind of use my eye. I use a recipe to know what ingredients I need, but from there I just wing it. Um, I'll go ahead and put the correct recipe down below in the description box. So I'm gonna let the barley cook, and then I'm also going to go ahead and add the most important part, which is the tomatoes. It's important that you get stewed tomatoes, um, so that way it has the right consistency. I'm really excited about this. This looks delicious. I think this is honestly my first time ever having barley, and I had um, trouble finding it in the grocery store, but I did find it. 
so I will see y'all with the finished product. I feel like a housewife in the 1920s, cooking hus cooking husband. Ooh. I am starving. I'm super excited to try out the soup. I have not tried it yet, so let's dig in. Mmm, this is so good. I don't know what I expected food <clears throat> to be like in the 1920s, but it's not significantly different than what I think people would eat today if they were eating at home and they cooked at home. Um, it's so good though. I'm gonna take one of my Babe Ruths that I got at the grocery store since Babe Ruth was invented in the 1920s. Okay, so let's talk about some research that I looked into. So currently there is 40% of adults that are overweight above the age of 20, which is really sad and scary. And obesity was not such a big problem in the 1920s. So 100 years ago, in the beginning of the 1900s, being plump was actually very attractive and then hit the 1920s and all of a sudden the thin figure, the, flap, the flapper girl figure was more in style. So women hurried to lose weight and really tried to work off the extra pounds that they had gained based off of the old beauty standard. A lot of families that were poor were not overweight because they could not afford food, so they would eat as much as they needed to to survive, essentially. And in the 1920s, this was when cars were becoming more common in American households, but they still weren't completely common. Also, this was before fast food chains existed. McDonald's was open in the 1950s, so at this point, um, there weren't any fast food places, so you can imagine that people were walking around more and did not consume fast food. They were eating meals like you've seen today, which is a lot healthier than what we see a modern American do, which is walk a few steps outside, get in the car, drive to a McDonald's, and order a order something for breakfast, you know, hash brown, McGriddle, whatever it is that they have there for breakfast and do that again for lunch and then bring something back for the entire family. So it was a lot of home cooking. Um, you tend to use less salt, less sugar because you are seeing it go in there and you know how harmful salt and sugar can be so you tend to put in less. Um, obesity really started going up in the 1960s and that's when fast food was becoming a big thing. So a lot of people act like it's such a mystery as to why obesity is such a large problem in the US and we see all of these fad diets, the ketogenic diets, um, the Atkins diet, all of these diets that do not work. And um, it's just because it's so intensive. We have a huge gym culture in the US, but if you're not getting in any steps throughout the day, it's still not enough. So simple measures that you can do to avoid being overweight or even if you are overweight, instead of going on a crash diet, Start by walking more in your neighborhood. If you can, walk to work. Also try cooking more at home. I think it's unrealistic to expect Americans to not eat out because it is a huge part of our culture. Just like I lived in Germany and a huge part of Germany's culture is going out and getting drinks and it's really hard to avoid that. In America, it's gonna be impossible to avoid eating out. It's just a big part of the culture, but maybe try to bring it down a little bit more and eat like they did in the 1920s, which is home cooked, sitting at the table, not in front of a TV. So I'm gonna make some hot cocoa for my grandma in a bit. I read online that hot cocoa in the 1920s had a very high demand. People were buying it like crazy, and that is because it was a prohibition era and people could not legally drink alcohol, so a lot of people would drink hot cocoa, which is so fun, I love it. I'm doing a sober year this year, so if you wanna see more about that, definitely subscribe to my channel. I don't know if this is anything like hot cocoa was back then. I can imagine that this probably has more sugar content and I feel like the ones back then were maybe more dark chocolate, like real cocoa. But this is what I have, so I'm gonna make it for my grandma. Grandma, here's some hot cocoa. All right. Mm. 
All righty. Okay, hello guys, what is up? It is currently 7.20 at night, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking dinner. Um, I'm going to make some type of beef thing that I saw online. I know that it needs potatoes, and I thought that we would have potatoes just because in Germany I have potatoes always at home, like it's a staple, and there are a few, but they're red potatoes, but we're gonna make it work. Um, because I'm not going to the grocery store at this time. So, I'm going to look up the recipe and I will get back to y'all with some cooking. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is take my potatoes and boil them in hot water. So, I'm going to do that. Then I need to get butter and put it on a skillet and um, mash up my beef. This is a um, beef mash. So, I think it's going to be a pretty simple recipe. Um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Labskaus, which is a German, northern German recipe, but without as many ingredients. But yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I put salt, pepper, oops salt, pepper, and um, garlic, minced garlic, um, and butter. So I'm going to go ahead and melt the butter, get the pan all seasoned for the beef. It actually said to put some milk in here, so I'm going to do that. I think that's more than enough. I think I actually added too much. Um, and then I'm waiting for the potatoes to boil a bit more and then I'm going to add it to here. Then I'm going to cook it all. Okay, so I have it all in here. I wish I had one of those mashers that I could use, but I don't. So I'm going to have to use a fork and um, stir it. So I will get back with y'all when I'm done. Okay, so I'm going to try the first bite. Mmm, I like it. It's good. It's exactly what I expected it to taste like. Really good. Alright guys, I just wanted to thank you again for watching this video all the way through. I cannot believe you watched 18 minutes of this madness. And so if you already made it here, you might as well subscribe to my channel. And please don't forget to like the video. That would really help me out a lot and it's completely free to you. I hope I will see y'all again next week. Bye bye!